where the only constant in life is change, you need to be ready. This is the Man Made Survival Show. Hello everyone, my name is Jose Prado with Memo Survival. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel and watching this video. As always, this information is very, very important, especially what we're going to be talking about today because it has to do with the economy. So hopefully, you're getting ready for the second wave of lockdowns because if this first wave that we experience pretty much from, let's say, March through May, all right, if you were devastated economically, chances are that this second wave might be the end of you know, you might, it might be the end of you. And I had to say it that way because, you know, it's not, it's nothing pleasant about it. But the point is that if you don't get prepared for what's coming and you still have the opportunity to, by the way, then the fault is going to be on you because you saw the things coming. But because some people don't believe that it's going to happen to them, they tend to not think about it, Right. Or they think to, or they they tend to think about it, and since they it scares them, they just say, "Forget it, and I do anything about it." You know, it is what it is, and that's really the most dangerous thing you can do because you having. It, okay, so let's say that you were sitting in the middle of the road, right, and you saw that there was a freaking train coming your way. Of course, you're gonna get out of the way. Right. You're not going to think, well, you know, my life is good right now and I don't want to think about all of this. So I'm just going to imagine that that train that's hitting my way is not going to hit me. Well, of course, reality is going to smack you right in the face. So that's why I say it's important for you to get prepared if you have not done it yet. Right. Because there's a lot of people out there, a, a whole bunch of people who just love to gather information. They love to know what's going on but they don't do anything about it. So it is important for you to go ahead, get it done now, because we're seeing the devastation of the second wave coming our way. And if we don't do anything about it, then we're going, we, we, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Not even the people who are doing this on purpose. All right, because since we're seeing it coming and we can do something about it and we're not stopping them, then it's our own fault. And the best way to get uh, or the best way to stop those people who may be who may be doing this on purpose, it's by being prepared, because if you prepare economically um, for, you know, for the devastation that we're seeing for the blows, then you got you're going to be able to withstand what's going on. You, f you find the information, you gather the information about who's really doing this and then you go out there and then you do something about it. Right. So. Let's get into the first headline that I have for you because it's really important, all right? And we're going to start with China. Before I read it to you, I'm going to kind of uh, let you know what it's about. So this article, it goes into depth, depth on what China is doing to accumulate so much gold, all right? And there's reasons for China to be doing that, especially at this time because gold is going to be what you need in order for you to become a reserve currency. All right, let's get into that headline. Chinese gold miners continue to gobble up gold companies. This from Zero Hedge. All right, that is the headline. And I'm not going to read much of the article. What I'm going to read about the article is how many um, companies have been bought and for how much. And it's going to give you the individual names. Here they go. Continental Gold Inc. was acquired for 103 billion Canadian dollars in early March by Xijin Mining Group Co. TM TMAC Resources entered into an agreement in early May with one of China's biggest gold producers, Shandong Gold Mining, to sell the company for Canadian 230 million. Guyana Goldfields was acquired by Xijin Mining Group for Canadian $323 million on June 12th. Cardinals Resources was acquired by Shandong Gold Mining for Canadian $300 million on June 19th. Is China preparing to issue a gold-backed currency? Only time will tell. But there have been plenty of rumblings since 2008 of China pushing a gold-backed yuan. If more companies continue to be gobbled up by Chinese mining companies, there certainly seems to be 
something strategic is going on behind the scenes. All right. That is exactly right. And that should really scare you because they're 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 moving the chips right now, right? They're they're moving the the piece on the chessboard for them to become the 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 reserve the world's reserve currency. That's the reason why they're going they're getting so much gold because we have so much debt right now that we will never ever be able to pay it. We're we're not one one generation ahead of spending. We're several generations ahead. All right. And the more the, the Fed and the government continue to just print on money and print on money, it's just going to make our collapse even greater. As I've said here for, for you know, for past videos, this is one of the main topics I talk about because there's four things that really worry me. All right. And one of them is nuclear war, EMP, uh, economic collapse. And the fourth one is an invasion of the United States. Because all four of those will will put a stop to the supply chain. And when there's a stop to the supply chain, that's when people will starve all around the country. Okay? So, the, your scenarios, when you plan in your scenarios, should be based upon the supply chain. Because when the grocery store can no longer stock up on goods, for one, you're going to have your neighbor being freaked out and everyone else with them. All right, and it's going to get violent. And two, you won't be able to resupply your supplies or replenish your supplies, which will make you also, um, you know, panic and become aggressive. And, and, and you know, your survival, mo survival mode will kick on. And that is why it's important for you to do what you need to do right now, especially since we know there's a second wave of lockdowns coming. They're talking about it now. All right, the second headline, excuse me, the second headline says this. China must prepare to be cut off from dollar-based financial system, officials warn. This is from Sir Hedge. Feng Xingai, a vice chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission, said that as China mainly relies on the U.S. dollar payment system in international deals, it makes it vulnerable to possible U.S. sanctions. Quote, such, such things have already happened to many Russian businesses and financial institutions. We have to make preparations early, real preparations, not just psychological preparations, end quote. Feng said at a forum organized by Chinese media outlet Kaixin. Feng's comments come at a time when Washington is pondering how far it should go to use the U.S. dollar's key role in international payment to punish Chinese individuals, companies, and financial institutions for, for alleged involvement in issues such as Xinjiang and Hong Kong. The solution, in Feng's view, is to continue to expand the international use of the yuan by Chinese trading powers. Even as Beijing's tight control of the currency remains a major obstacle to this, quote, yuan internationaliz internationalization is a must to offset external financial pressure, end quote. Fang added, if our, if our overseas assets were held in Yuan, there won't be such worries over U.S. dollar devaluation. Okay, so China knows that they don't, that because of what's happening with the Pacific, with uh, us sending three uh, aircraft carriers, because, you know, we, we're trying to, we're trying to let them know that we're in the area, that we know what's going on with Thai, with Taiwan, with um, Philippines, you know, with the with them trying to say that the islands that they artificially created now is their territory. All right. So we're sending that out there. You know, the, the, the trading that they were supposed to do that they're not doing, that's going to create even more problems. And they know that eventually sometime in the future, which could probably be the near future, they're going to get sanctioned. All right. And as we've seen in Russia, we've seen in Venezuela, we've seen in Iran and other countries around the world, we know the sanctions work and it's going to it could make a very devastating blow to their economy, especially in times like this, where we're already having a lot of problems because of the, of the pandemic. All right. Whether it's real or not, whether it's, you know, just control or whatever. The point is that things as they are right now, they're very difficult. And if we add that pressure 
to them, then they're going to have to retaliate somehow. And it could turn out to be war. That's why you must be prepared. All right. The next headline that I have for you is going to bring things to the United States. Running out of time, U.S. soybean farmers disappointed as China goes elsewhere. This is from Sierra Hedge. Iowa Soybean Association President Tim Bardole told NBC News that President Trump's signing of the Phase 1 trade deal has been a disappointment, and China's commitment as per the trade deal will likely not be met. The hope and hype surrounding the greatest trade deal ever in the greatest economy ever by the president and his administrative officials have been nothing short of false, false hope for farmers who bought bigger tractors on the promise of massive new deals from China have been left in financial ruins as Chinese buyers went elsewhere. As, Chinese, as China ditched American farmers for Latin American ones, the Trump administration had to deploy tens of millions of dollars in taxpayer bailout to supplement the income of farmers due to lost trade because of protectionist policies. All right, so there we have two blow well technically three blows on there right one of them is that again our food system is getting hit because as it said in the article if they're not able to meet those quotas or you know sell that food pretty much if they cannot make the money out of it right without getting fancy with the words they're just going to have lost revenue and they they could go belly up all right if they go belly up they're not just supplying China, they're supplying the United States too. And as I've said over and over in past videos, right, our farmers are getting hit really hard. They have had rec uh, record-breaking number of bankruptcy filings. And if it continues the same way that it is, we're eventually going to feel the pain. All right. Now, the other aspect of this is that Trump had to give a bailout to the farmers that means that we're adding more debt, as I mentioned in the beginning of the article. That is the reason why China is positioning itself, because we're going to eventually going to collapse. All right? Whether somebody else does it to us or we do it to ourselves, we're going to collapse. That's what China, Russia, and the BRICS nations, they're getting together. They're putting things together to where when that happens, they're going to be able to survive it. And they're going to be able to just roll out an, excuse me, another system which more than likely would be China's uh, yuan. And if it's backed by gold, everyone is going to be in that, in that, um, is going to be wanting to trade in those because they know that if something happens, they can turn it in for gold. So that is the reason why it is important that they're doing this now. That's why you must get prepared. All right. So that brought it to the United States. We're getting, um, the farmers are getting hit again. Our detentions because of the trade deal, it's going to skyrocket again, as I'm going to be sharing later on in another podcast. And um, we're bailing people out, you know, adding more debt and doing the same thing that we've done for many, many years. All right. So now that I said that there's going to be a second wave of coronavirus and there's going to be a second lockdown, then there's going to be even more people being unemployed. Right now, we're about 49 million unemployed. All right, and and I was I was thinking about something, um, you know, pretty much this week. There's a lot of people. Oh, okay, hold on. Let let me rephrase that. We have 49 million people unemployed, right? But there's a lot of people who have not even been able to get through the system to let people know that they are unemployed, or you know, their their cities or states. So if we have 49 million that we're counting for because they were successful to get through the system. What about all these other people who have not been able to go through the system to claim um, benefits? Because as of yesterday or the day before, there was another 1.5 million people added to the unemployment. Right. So that could be 1.5 million people who couldn't get through since March, because as, as I've shared here before, the, there was a lot of people who couldn't get through. One lady was 888,000 in line. So how long did it take them for them to get to her? I have no idea. The point is that it could be that so much more people are actually unemployed that we know of because they, could not, they can't get through the system yet because it's being overwhelmed by the number of callers and, and so many people trying to get to the system and it's crashing it. So that could be a reason why 
or that could be an explanation why the numbers keep increasing, you know, even though states are reopening, even though they're going back into a lockdown. All right. So here's what I'm going to I'm going to share with you with this headline. Here it is. The magnitude of the second round of jobs losses won't be a, apparent until after the election. This is also from Sear Hedge. With a nod to all of the Fed's accommodative efforts and Washington stimulus push, these measures are by definition temporary fixes designed to provide a bridge for firms to weather the pandemic with the objective of successfully reopening and reestablishing and retooling in the new normal. Here's the important part. The October, the October 31st expiration of the payroll protection program has undoubtedly kept the ranks of the unemployment lower than they had initially if not being deployed. Even if a more cynical interpretation implies that another round of job sheddings had only been delayed to the final two months of 2020, the fact that the magnitude of the second round losses won't be evident until after voters go to the polls on November 3rd isn't, isn't lost on us. But was it ever going to be any other way? We digress. All right, so pretty much what it's saying is that the loans and the protection that people are getting right now because of all the uh, because of the stimulus package that was passed a few months ago, it's going to end in October 31st. And that means that three days later or so is going to be the the election and whether Trump, you know, it's reelected or not, or it might be Joe or whoever, Joe Biden. That means that at the end of the year. On the holiday season, all right, there's going to be a new wave of a lot of more people being unemployed or possibly could be since they won't be protected under under the package anymore. All right. So let's say that we do get to November, which is Thanksgiving, then following Christmas, then New Year's. So we get to that point at the end of the year and, uh, you know, let's say Trump loses. And there's a lot of people already really angry because Trump lost, you know, because they're going to say that the, the game was rigged and, and they just did everything to cheat to get him out of the office, you know, put whatever excuse there. Then add another wave of, of unemployment and let's say it stays 49 million people and then you add even more. We're already in a Great Depression. We have financial collapse. We have riots in the streets. Uh, everything is very chaotic because of the election. And it's just a powder keg. And then at the end of the year, when a lot of people already get um, holiday blues, and so, you know, like the throughout those months, the rate of suicide already increases on any on any given year. Now, if we have all of this put together at the end of the year, we could see a big wave of people committing suicide. Not just because of the holidays, but because of all the other problems they're facing. I hope it doesn't come to that. And I hope that, you know, there's no suicides. But sadly, that's a different reality. So let's let if 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 you happen to be one of those people who get the blues during the holidays because, you know, you lost family members, you know, whatever the case may be. I encourage you to go to a church, to go to um, some type of help, you know, go get some help. So you can get through 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 the holidays, and not only that, through all the through all the chaos we're potentially going to see in the next few months, right? You know, November is not that far off; it's about four to five months away. So that is why you must get ready. Okay, that is the reason why that if if you're seeing this coming out, especially since since I'm telling you about it and you're listening about it here, then it. It's going to be very important for you to get prepared. All right. So I want to stop here for a second. And I want to tell you about my book. It's Prepper Secret Cash. You can go to www.preppersecretcash.com and you can order it from there. Or you can just click the link below and order it from there as well. I want to remind you that the books is absolutely free. All we need your help is with shipping. And as soon as you put your information, we'll send it to you right away. The reason I'm reminding you of my book is because it's important as the times that we live in now to get the information that's in here because I talk about a bunch of scenarios and as I've, I've shared, you know, the podcast, I tell you what you should stack up on, you know, um, what you can expect from other people, the way they behave and things like that, the government, what they're going to do, 
what are the survival skills that you should have so i talk about all those things about about it here in this book all right so again it's www.preppersecretcash.com or just click the link below so the next headline that i have for you that i have for you is the possibility of another round of stimulus checks all right here it is Trump tells aides he supports second round of stimulus checks, but White House division remains. This is from GrandWitch.com. President Donald Trump has told aides he is largely supportive of, of sending Americans another round of stimulus checks, believing the payments will boost the economy and help his chances at re-election in November. According to three people aware, aware of internal administration deliberations, the president has emphasized in public his desire to cut payroll taxes for businesses in the next stimulus package. Asked on Monday whether the administration would be sending American second round of stimulus checks, Trump said, we are, but then quickly shifted the, the discussion to a different matter, making it unclear what he was referring to. White House officials said the administration continues to study the checks and that the president is hearing from different advisors but has not reached a final decision. Even if, president, even if the president formally backs the idea, it is not clear whether Congress Republicans will go along with the plan. All right, so yet again, another stimulus package. If you remember a few weeks back, Nancy Pelosi and, and actually the House of Representatives did pass a package. It was, it was called the HEROES Act, and it was about three point something trillion dollars. And, of course, the Republicans didn't sign it, the Senate didn't sign it, and Trump didn't sign it. So it didn't come to pass. But could this be the next round, as, you know, Nancy Pelosi had put it in, in, in the previous package? They're supposed to um, decide on it or vote on it in July. Okay? So are they going to do it? I don't know. But if they did, let's go with if they did, then that's going to put another $3 trillion inside the... Um, into the the debt all right we're already at 26 trillion dollars in debt if they do this in july we're gonna be jumping really cl really close to 30 trillion dollars okay those are debts that are just unfathomable to if i said that right to even comprehend on how we're ever gonna repay that with which of course we're never ever gonna be able to repay that okay now let's go if they did not pass it okay there's people who are already struggling right now. There's 49 million people unemployed. Are they getting the benefits? Probably, since, you know, they're in the system. But once that money runs out and they no longer are getting that money, then they're going to want to get another check because they're going to be dependent on it because they cannot work. So I hope you see the trend, how everything is coming. China, in one hand, is getting ready for becoming the world currency, and they're buying a lot of gold, a lot of gold mining, and they're going to... You know, get out of the ground and, stick it, and take it right to China. And again, they position themselves to be the, the savior of the world by becoming the world currency once we deteriorate. Our our um, our farmers are getting hit again. We're bailing them out and it's creating tensions with, with China. And now another round of stimulus, we're talking about it. Okay, so that is what could happen if we do that. Now, as I was mentioning a second ago, which um, I'm about to say it is that the dollar could collapse, which is my next headline. Here it is. The decline of the U.S. dollar could happen at warp speed in the era of coronavirus, warns prominent economist Stephen Roach. This from MarketWatch.com. Stephen Roach, a Yale University senior fellow and former Morgan Stanley Asian chairman, tells MarketWatch that his forecast for a sharp deterioration of the U.S. dollar could be a very near-term phenomenon, not an event that looms off in the distance. All right, I'm going to come back from that for a second and tell you. Do you remember when I told you that now we can see the timeline? It's no longer fuzzy, all right? We cannot, it's not longer sometime in the future. That's why you got to get prepared because something may happen. No, in every aspect, in every way that you're looking around, there's timelines that they are really, really close. You can see them coming towards you. All right, as he said, he's seeing it coming. It's it's no longer just sometime in the future. Or if we continue this, it's gonna be it's happening. You know. All right, let's get back into the article. 
Quote, I do think it's something that happens sooner rather than later, end quote, the economist told Market Watch during a Monday afternoon interview. Quote, in a COVID era, everything unfolds at warp speed, end quote, Roach told Market Watch on Monday. He pointed to the contraction of the U.S. economy from an unemployment rate that was hovering around 50-year low at around 3.5% near the start of 2020 to one that shows some 49 million people unemployed since the pandemic took a hold in March. He also noted that the rapid and unprecedented fiscal and monetary response that has ballooned the Federal Reserve's, ba Re Federal Reserve's balance sheet to more than $7.2 trillion from $4 trillion at the start of the year as examples of the celerity at which the currency market could change. Roach is calling for the dollar to soon decline 35% against its major rivals, citing increase in nation's deficit and dwindling savings. All right, so 35%, that is huge. That is huge. We cry when it hits 2 or 3% decline. All right, imagine 35%. And the major rivals that we have, it's the euro, the pound, and the yuan, as I was talking at the beginning of the, of the show. All right, so that is why it's that is why it's important for you to prepare. Now, what can you do to prepare? You know, that's the purpose of the show. You must know what you should do. All right, what you should do is exactly what I tell you in my book. All right, I give you a bunch of stuff in here that you need to prepare to stock up on, because we could see that the dollar, or actually, we could see the 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 price of goods hyperinflate, as we see in Venezuela. All right, the other thing that you need to do is that you need to have gold and silver if you can get your hands on it if you still have the funds for you to be able to do that because they're projecting or at first a few months ago they, they were projecting that if something was to happen the the an ounce of gold will go from 15 1700 that it is now to three thousand dollars or over three thousand dollars all right this is double on what it was you know in that scenario now they're talking about it could go over a thousand over ten thousand dollars announce all right that's a big jump and as i've shared in in previous podcasts i show a chart in venezuela how one ounce of gold all right while here in the united states is, it costs seventeen hundred dollars over there is 13 million of their pet of their euros or you know excuse me of their their dollar that that's how big the gap got because of the economy collapsing in venezuela so if they're projecting that in the United States, one ounce of gold is going to go over ten thousand dollars. What's stopping it from going over fifty, over a hundred thousand, over a million? You know, that's how how big the hyperinflation can get. That's one way that you can tell how bad the economy really is by how high the gold gets. You know, without people manipulating it and keeping it low, so investors don't freak out and then they don't pull out of the market and all those things. All right, so that's how you should prepare for this. All right, that's assuming you already have your food at least three to six months, ideally over two years, because a collapse will last a lot longer. In Venezuela, it's been seven years since their collapse. You kind of ha you're gonna have to have enough water, right? Because uh, the prices of electricity are gonna skyrocket, and if you don't have any power at your home, you're not gonna be able to turn on the faucets, all right? And you're gonna have to have water because. That is going to be the one thing that's going to make people migrate if they can't find water. Because from that time that they drank the last drop that they owned, they're three days away from death. That's why it's important, top of the list, for you to have water and a way to purify it. Third thing, third thing is going to be that you're going to have to get your security in check. You're going to have to have your guns and your bullets. That's when it's going to come in handy. As, I mean, as we've seen how the, the state of the country is right now, you know, when something like that happens, it's just going to explode even more violent. If we think that what we're seeing now is violence, just wait until the economy collapses and nobody can eat and there's no water coming out of your faucet and stuff like that. All right. The Jones won't be as nice as they used to be. All right. They're going to break down their own white picket fence in order to get to your house to get your things. The other things you're going to need, you're going to need your alliances because you're going to have to take care of each other, right? You cannot 
you, you cannot defend yourself against 100 people coming on your property. But if you have enough manpower, you can do it. All right. The next thing is going to be uh, you're going to have to secure communications because if for some reason there's still a power grid, you know, and and there's still radio stations and, and TV stations and stuff like that during a collapse of that magnitude, then you're going to have to get information on how bad things are getting out there. Because if you cannot afford to uh, pay for TV anymore, you can just turn on the radio in your car or if you own, if you own one, which I suggest that you do because your battery is eventually going to run on your car, then you're going to get information like that, all right? And you're also going to need walkie-talkies because if you're going to have alliances that's going to patrol your area, you know, 24-7, 365, then you're going to have to be able to communicate back and forth just in case something happens to someone because if you don't know what's happening to them, you don't know that you had a breach in your in your in your fence or you know in your property all right um also ham radio ham radio is very important because you can get information from the outside of the country in because they're going to be reporting what's going on in the united states in a different way that we would see it here in the united states of what's going on in here and that's why it's important for you to get information from outside all right and finally the the last thing that you would need it would be a bug out bag. The reason you're gonna need a bug out bag is because if you have to flee your area because there's no water, there's no power, there's no food, and you have to migrate, a bug out bag is gonna be the best thing that you can own because you're gonna have the essentials for you to be able to survive. Especially if you don't if you have a filter and if you have the things that you need in it. For example, the backpack that I sell in my store. That's going to have everything you need in order for you to survive, not just in an urban set setting, but also in the wilderness. Because if you don't want to go migrate with everyone else and you want to go, you know, off the road into the woods so you can kind of like swing around everybody, then you're going to have to have those essentials for you to be able to survive in the woods. All right? That's why I put the backpack together with that in mind. So please go to menmensurvivalstore.com. And you can order a backpack from there and I'll send it to you as quickly as I can. All right. So, again, it's important for you to prepare. It's important for you to pay attention to what's going on. And it's important for you to get prepared. All right. So, remember, my name is Jose Prado. Always ready. The Man-Made Survival Show.